Hello, welcome to Serving the Valley. This is a Cedar Falls television production that gets you up close and personal about what I think makes this part of Iowa kind of a nice place to call home. I'm Roy Justice, and today folks are here to educate Roy once again. This segment is going to be called, is called, will forever be called, Cedar Valley Angels. And we have a couple of angels to join us. This should be very interesting. Derek Kimball is the executive director of Cedar Valley Angels. Welcome, Derek. Good morning. Ebony Cody is trying to figure out what is she doing here. <laughs> Ebony Cody is one of the case managers of Cedar Valley uh, Angels. And Kelsey Schmitz is responsible for this entire program. She's the vice president and board member. And seriously, this is a fairly new, a really new agency here in the Cedar Valley. And I'm hoping in the next several minutes we can educate you on what it is they do, and they do it very well. Derek, if we had to know in a sentence or two what you do, how would you explain that to somebody like Roy? Yeah, so we take, we take people in the community who are excited about, uh, excited about supporting the foster care system and partner them with foster families to help lift them up because uh, their work is really difficult. We have done a previous program about the foster parenting uh, situation here in the Cedar Valley and the need for foster parents, and we're going to get deeper into that in the time we have. Um, there are many issues for consideration for foster parents. Uh, among those is the amount of time and maybe expense that may be necessary, and there's some, I think, some fallacies about that whole situation. How do people start into the foster parenting situa situation? Yeah, well, uh, usually they're, you know, they're recruited somehow, and then they have to take a class that's a 10-week, three hours a week class, so 30 hours, that is, uh, and then they have to have a, um, a home study and background checks and you know, the, that, kind of, um, that kind of stuff to get done before they can start in to their foster parenting journey. I alluded to the need. Mm -hmm the need apparently is still great. Yeah. Yep, I would, I would say right now we've got, about a th we've got about three times the number of kids in foster care in Blackhawk County than we do foster parents. Now some of those kids are, um, you know, they're in a facility or they're in, they live with grandma or grandpa or aunt or uncle, but we definitely have a shortage of foster parents. We have a kid in our home right now and I got a call yesterday from Four Oaks, hey, do you have any room in your house? And I was like, oh, not really. Hmm. So yes, we definitely have a shortage for uh, foster parents right now. Okay, so uh, to get into your uh, your cohorts here in mm -hmm. the uh, in the angel category, <laughs> fairly new to the situation. Yeah, yeah, just about a few months ago, yep. I think. June just started mm -hmm. June. And what was it that pulled you into the Cedar Valley Angels? Derek, <laughs> I, I yeah, no, I um, I grew up in foster care, and so one of my biggest things and passions was to do something within the foster care system, um, whether that be with adoption or you know anything with social work. Um, and I just happened to be at an event um, that Derek was attending, and he approached me and asked me about what I was doing, which um, then turned into, hey, this is what I do, and I kind of you know, went on the internet and stalked the website a little bit and learned about it and was like, I didn't even know this was a thing. Mm -hmm. And I asked him about, you know, career opportunities and yeah. here we are. And we just yeah. happened to be hiring at the time. Yeah. So that really kind <laughs> yeah. of worked out. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Okay, so um, your situation, you're on the board, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Okay, and how many are on the board? Seven people on the board. Okay, and by the way, where are you? Where is Cedar Valley. Like where are we located yes, physically? Right. So we have an office uh, out of um, out of a building that Orchard Hill Church owns. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a small little kind of bedroom sized office right now. So we're that's kind of uh, it works for the time being. Okay. <laughs> so that's where we're located. Yeah. As I bounce back to Kelsey, yeah. <laughs> what drew you into this? Um, I'm an adoptive parent, and the adoption foster care community is closely intertwined and. Um, after our kids had been a part of our family for several several years, I felt like it was my turn to take what I know about adoption and kids entering your home with trauma and take it outside of the walls of our home. Um, and I wanted to serve 
foster families, but I kept running into this wall of I don't know how to help. And so when, um, when I heard about National Angels, Austin Angels, Cedar Valley Angels, right away for me, it was a big yes, because this was a way to connect the dots between, in my opinion, a community that wants to be here for our foster families and our foster families who are doing hard work inside the walls of their home every day. Okay, so as a case worker, Ebony, as we're bouncing, I'm, I'm driving our director nuts. Like, oh, we know no, you're fine. <laughs> you're doing great. <laughs> uh, uh, as a caseworker, you get deep down in the each and in the, uh, individually uh, mm -hmm. with these families. Um, where's the serious need right now to empower these families and these kids who are in the program? Yeah. Um, right now, what I would say is a lot of it is the emotional aspect, it's the relational aspect. Um, sometimes when I go into the homes and I'm talking to these foster parents, more times than not I'm hearing, I just really want some adult time, I want someone to talk to, I want to be able to open up about what's going on mm -hmm. and, and feel like it's okay and it's a safe space. And so I'd say that's probably the biggest piece. So the bottom line here is eventually we're empowering kids to move into adulthood mm -hmm. And and, uh, and move on with our life. Absolutely. That's the ultimate goal. Absolutely, yep. Now, I talked about the need. We talked about, the, and there's a waiting list. Yep. Um, how do you keep recruiting? So the foster and adoptive network in the Cedar Valley is pretty tight-knit. It's not very big. Um, we kind of, like Kelsey talked about, we just kind of, we know each other. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, I see a lot of our foster parents when I go to trainings and I go to things that like a Four Oaks or a DHS puts on because I'm a foster parent as well and so I see a lot of these people and so I get to talk to them um, when they're there as well getting their you know they're taking a class um, to keep their license current uh, so and then we're working with Four Oaks as well um, and so they, they get to hand out our information and say hey you should really call Derek or you should really call Ebony this is a really great service that you could use in your home, I think. So, so we're building upon the relationships. We start with um, we start with the training. Yep. The kids come from. They come from all kinds of places. I mean, usually they come from a, a biological parent that is having some trouble and needs, um, you know, needs some intervention in order to get, get some things figured out before they can hopefully get their kids back. And this eventually may lead to adoption from a foster parenting? Yeah, about, about half of the time, roughly, that's a real rough statistic, um, we have kids that go back to their biological parents because the, they have figured out whatever they need to figure out in order to have them back. And half the time, we do see um, those rights that get terminated and uh, then the kids um, are adoptable, sometimes by family members or sometimes by foster parents people in the community. Okay, so, and, and the connection is maintained throughout the life of the, of the child involved, if that's possible? The connection with who? With everybody, where it started. Yeah. It's, the idea is to keep all of those connections mm -hmm. as long as possible? Yes, yes, with, the, with kids who have experienced traumatic events, um, the more times that we have to sever a relationship, the more times they have to move from, uh, from this home to this home, the harder it is for them. Kids on average lose six months academically every time they move from one home to the next. And, and the relational implications are, are just so hard. So yeah, we want to keep those, those relationships with those kids. So in our Love Box program, our volunteers, uh, we say, hey, if this child were to move from this home to this home and it's, and it's a reasonable distance, Mm -hmm. um, and it fits, then we would want you to continue to go and to see this child and to see this new family, you know, so that child has somebody that's consistent in their lives, you know, other than the, um, than the workers, the Four Oaks and DHS and those kinds of people. Okay, you just used the term, and I, I need to have that defined a little better. You said love box. Yeah. What, what, what is the love box? So, the, like I said earlier, the love box program takes a group of people from the community partners them with a foster family in an effort to lift up that whole home and be, a, a, kind of like Ebony said, a real relational, emotional support for those parents and for those kids. And the reason we call it a love box 
is because they actually take a box full of goods, full of things that the, that the kids and the families want or need every month um, as a way to say, hey, I see you, I appreciate you, I believe in you, and I, wanna, I want to give you something to show that, hey, I'm here for you, and I'm listening to the things that you want and need. So it's, a, it's another way for us to say, hey, we are here for you. We want to come alongside you and help lift you up. As it turns yeah. out, as if by magic, let's sprinkle a little bit of angel dust, if you will, <laughs> and show the folks what we've just been talking about. <laughs> Hi. Hi, do you want to come inside? Hi, I'm Rebecca. We're really excited to have you be part of the family. Come on, it's okay. Hi, I'm Cool John. Thanks. <laughs> Tommy, get off! Get off your brother! <sighs> <laughs> Amber, I brought you some shoes. I heard that you really like science, right? And a backpack. It's big enough for all the science boys, right? Here, you want to try it on? It's really big. I know. <laughs> oh, there you go. Thank you. You're more than welcome, beautiful. <laughs> See you later. Yes, 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 I brought you a football. There you are, graphically speaking, the love box. Um, we're here with uh, Derek and Ebony and Kelsey, and we're talking about the Cedar Valley Angels. Um, to a specific point, and this came as a surprise to me as I was reading through some, some of the verbiage before we came on the air. PTSD, which we normally hear referred to by those returning from military service, can also show up in kids. Is this something it, you, it shows up often? <clears throat> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So every, Next question. No, 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 no. I, I just, you know, I'm kind of an air hog here. Yeah. Uh, you know, all kids that have ex had that are in foster care have experienced at least two traumatic events. One was the reason that the authorities were alerted in the first place. Okay. And the second was when that child, a lot of times, late at night or unexpectedly opens their eyes to see that there are, the police are there. The fire department is there, the um, DHS is there, and they are being taken and put into a strange car with a strange okay. person and dropped off at a strange house and have no idea what's going on. So definitely our, our kids have things that, are, that can trigger them into those past events um, that, that have happened, and likely there's more than just two. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Ebony, I'm coming back to you again. <laughs> okay. uh, even though you're new to the system yeah. and you came up a little bit yourself yeah. within the system, mm -hmm. um, what comes to the top of your mind as, as the biggest need out there right now within the entire operation of, of foster care? Like within the Cedar Valley Angels, the yes. entire yes. need? Um, just, I mean, people who are wanting to get involved, I'd say, I mean, We've got a ton of people in the community that are wanting to do something but don't know what, and 
um, I mean, being here and raising awareness is huge because mm -hmm. like, just like me, I didn't even know this existed. And um, had I known this, like if this started like years ago in this area, I would have like jumped on, you know, right away if I knew about it. And so I think just raising awareness about what we're doing and like that there is someone out there doing something and that, you know, those people who are like, I, I want to be able to do something, but I don't know how to help. And I don't, I'm not called to foster or adopt, but you know, and I think that's kind of like, mm -hmm. we have a saying that's, that goes like, not all are called to foster or adopt, but we're all called to do something. Yes. Um, and I, I couldn't say that is, I mean, that's the most truest thing I think I've ever heard. Um, that we're all called to do something and that may not be to foster or adopt, but it, it could be to volunteer. It could be to donate. It could be really anything in those areas. So if we've touched the nerve of someone who wants to do something and they're looking for a contact, how would they contact you? So they could contact me at my, my email or phone number, which are both on the website, Derek at cedarvalleyangels.org, 319-939-1909 are the two things, two ways to best contact me. And to go along with what Ebony was saying, I'll brag on here, I'll brag on her here for a minute. Um, <laughs> Up until about a month ago, we had more children and more families on our wait list than we did in the program, mm -hmm. uh, just because uh, my capacity was only so much to, to grow our organization. And so we had something like 50 some, 50 some kids and 10 families, I think, mm -hmm. on our wait list. We still have four or five mm -hmm. and like 30 that. children that are on our wait list. Um, but we're, we're, I'm really proud of the fact that uh, in the last month we've grown up to um, serving 52 children and 14 families every month right now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, the, the need for volunteers is always there because we want to make the best matches with foster families and volunteers that we can. And that doesn't mean just taking Roy and, and Ebony and just saying, oh, Let's just draw a line between them. Mm -hmm. Let's talk to them and see what is the best, what is the best kind of relational match here. And so having volunteers in our network, people that step forward and say, yeah, I would be willing to, to, to go and hang out with a foster family once or twice a month is huge for us. That's probably always going to be our biggest need. And we do have, you know, raising awareness, we're new. Um, and also because we're new, we have a lot of funding needs too. Mm -hmm. And so I would say, yeah, the volunteer, uh, is definitely going to be the, the front-running need most of the time for us. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't mean to skip over the, because uh, you weren't applying for the job. You already have a job. But <laughs> a little bit of your educational background. Yeah. So I grew up in Jessup, just a little bit mm -hmm. uh, east of here. And I went to UNI, a degree in math education, which is kind of funny when I tell people that math education and now you're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, so I taught high school math at East High in Hudson uh, here in the Cedar Valley. And, you know, being a, a foster and adoptive family, um, we started our adoption journey in 2012. That was kind of the thing that got me into the foster adoptive network in our community. And I started to hear the stories and the same stories over and over of, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to turn. I don't have enough capacity. I feel like I'm just kind of barely above water right now. And between my wife and I, we just kind of brainstormed, hey, what could we do? And that's kind of where this, how this happened. So. And Kelsey, in higher education, Iowa State was where your campus? Um, yep, I have a degree in elementary education um, at Iowa State. I taught for six years and then we became an adoptive family as well in 2012, and um, and we didn't know each other. No, nope. <laughs> we actually <laughs> met through a mutual friend, which right. was kind of a fun story too. Hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so um, we uh, adopted our three children at that time, and so then I've been doing the full-time mom gig since then, and as our kids have gotten older, um, was just ready to do more. And Ebony, in your case, your education just continues every day. <laughs> <laughs> and who thought at the beginning of this day, you'd be right here educating us? Yeah, yeah. who knew? <laughs> I want to thank you all for joining us and, and uh, uh, helping to educate Roy about this, this new nonprofit, fairly new nonprofit here in the Cedar Valley, the Cedar Valley Angels. For further contact information, Jeremy, do we have a look at that? As if by magic. There it is right there. <laughs> Any um, folks out there wanting to get more information about the Cedar Valley Angels, there's your contact right there.
And I want to thank all three of you for joining us thank on you. our program thank today. Thanks for having us. Okay. And until our uh, next opportunity unfolds, Serving the Valley, I'm Roy Justice. <laughs>